This week, how to get way more shit done according to your higher values and what the world needs with one simple question my children ask me 62 times a day. But first, I'm Quinn Emmett and this is important, not important. Science for people who give a shit. Here's your weekly action steps. Please don't use public Wi-Fi without a VPN, please. If you can't just hotspot, use the lightning fast Molvad VPN to secure your data. Are you on the hunt for new furniture? Save some trees and check out Cayo's Marketplace to buy and sell fancy used furniture. Cancel out your transportation emissions and find your next or first e-bike at Ride Review. And number four, wanna go to Climate Farm School? I do or be a climate VC, get the education you need and build an incredible network with our friends at TerraDo. And now, today's big question. Who do you wanna be? And more importantly, why? Let me tell you a story. Exactly 1,000 years ago in 2008, a beloved cousin was diagnosed with cancer. And after a tough conversation with myself, where I reminded myself that I had no practical or even really discernible skills that could assist with her treatment, but still desperate to find a way to help, I signed up for a triathlon. Why? Well, I was just three years out of being a two-sport college athlete, and I'd recently discovered Team in Training, the fundraising arm of the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. So I trained with them, and then I ran and biked and swam and tore a hamstring, and Good news is I raised over $20,000 for cancer research and treatment from a wide swath of friends and family. It was an incredible experience. I was, and still am, a moron, but I felt like I was doing something. It was addicting. And many of my close friends gave immediately upon hearing about my mission and the organization I was raising funds for, but quite a lot of the money actually came from friends of friends and even several degrees further away from that. How? Facebook. Yeah, no, I know. But way back in 2008, when, you know, triceratops were still a thing, using Facebook to get the word out about a cause was fairly novel. And I was struck by how incredibly effective it was. Of course, that's no longer novel today, gathering money from strangers. In 2023, millions of strangers on GoFundMe, for example, are covering half of our nation's medical and bail bills. That ubiquity is a double-edged sword, though. It's never been easier to donate your time, your money, and other resources on the web or whatever, but it can be daunting, if not paralyzing, to sort through countless worthy causes. Donate to these presidential candidates, and these Senate races, and these Hout races. Oh, but don't forget about down ballot races, like we did for 15 years. So here's another 20 make or break races between people you've never heard of, but who can either guarantee or take away bodily autonomy for millions of people. You're welcome. And then, of course, there's all the worthy and reputable nonprofits and mutual aid across health and politics, international science, food, water. Now, thankfully, there's tools to help corral a lot of that, to make it easier to strategize and give your time, your money, your resources, whatever. But it's still easy and completely understandable to feel pulled in a million directions at once. So here's one simple solution. Take a step back and ask why. Consider the hammer and nail story, proverb or whatever, which I'm gonna thoroughly mangle here for your benefit. You go to a hardware store because you need a nail. But need is the wrong word. You want a nail. But you don't really want a nail. You wanna be able to hang something on your wall. But you don't really wanna hang something, right? You wanna hang art. But you don't really wanna hang art. You wanna hang up the art of a up and coming black artist you don't really want to hang the art of an up-and-coming black artist. You want to show yourself, your family, and anyone that comes into your home that you appreciate this kind of art. And you support young black artists, which is great, to be clear, but you don't really want to just show them that you're that person. You want to actually be that person. And buying a nail to hang this frame of artwork on your wall is the first step to being that person or you think it should be, or someone told you it should be. It seems logical, easy, right? Just a toe in the water. Maybe you've never hung art before. But step back a little bit further. And now even further. Now stop. Why do you want to be that person? The why at 30,000 feet should always drive the how, what you're doing today, in your life, 
parenting, your work, everything. This is not some new idea, by the way. I am not the first to say it, support it, attempt to live it by any stretch. But for our work here, and how it applies to our world more than ever, and to you, our action-oriented readers, it really matters. So as you stand there in the hardware store aisle, trying to figure out which nail will support your progressive new frame bridge piece without ripping out a chunk of your drywall five minutes later, start by asking yourself this. Have you always wanted to be the person that does these specific things, that holds these values? Or is there something or someone new in your life or in the world that's encouraged you to become that person, to take this first step? And further back, is this the right first step? I don't know, maybe. For example, look at it this way. If you really wanna support young black artists, what's the rest of your strategy to encourage more support for this artist and for other young black artists besides one painting hanging in your room? Are there galleries you can visit to which you can bring friends? Can you feature their art on your Instagram? Can you even put photos on Instagram anymore? I don't know. Should you reach out to the artist to have a conversation? Sorry, stay puffed about their intentions and their perspective. Are they open to that? Why or why not? Can you sponsor an art installation at the local library? Can your company chip in? Are there nonprofits you can contribute to that provide stipends for black artists in your area? Those are real things. Is your local government interested or involved in supporting black artists? If not, do you need new voices in your local government to draft legislation that will support the artists that live in your town now? Who might be best suited for that office? Further, and I know, but this matters, would having those new elected officials in place, writing progressive legislation that supports diverse art and makes the cost of living more affordable, knowing art doesn't exactly always pay the rent, might all of that attract more artists to come and work and live in your town? How will those moves help put your town on the map? I know you're not trying to do all that, but coming at a problem or opportunity or both from several concerted directions at once can often be way more effective. So what might be the limited portfolio of strategies you are best suited, you are best suited to simultaneously engage in for this specific opportunity, for this thing you care about? What makes you, your personality, your energy, your income, your time, your skills, most effective here? Ask yourself, how can you personally affect the outcome? Make a list. Will you do all of this quietly, which is fine? Or do you seek approval from your spouse or your children or the artists themselves? Is there a middle ground that appeals to your ego, but is still effective without being obnoxious? What are the second order consequences of choosing to invest your time, your money, and your energy in this? Because, you know, crystal clear here, folks, we can only do so much with the time that we're given, but we do have to use that time as productively as we can. Ask honest questions about yourself and your intentions and the life you want to live and the relationship you have with the world. Build your whys. If you watch these videos, listen to this, read the newsletter, you already know you care about uh, the planet, about health and others, about equity and justice, you get off on taking action. That's great to fight the bad stuff, to bring up and defend and advance the good stuff. And you can drill that down a little further, right? Into caring about environmental justice, clean water, air, public health, uh, healthy, affordable food, infant formula, groundbreaking clean jobs, uh, helping frontline communities adapt about those zebrafish I always talk about that drive pediatric cancer research. Somebody's got to buy them. Make your current and your future day-to-day -day actions answerable to, you know, two to three, maybe four core values, which I should probably name. Look at today's endless to-do list, which you've already got down. And like my children do, ask why for each thing you've asked yourself to do. And then ask it again and again going from ground level to 5,000 feet to 10,000 feet to 30,000 and, and blue sky until you've arrived at one of these values, or you haven't. In which case, you might want to ask yourself if you should be spending your valuable time on something that doesn't fit those core values. Be relentless about this last part, and I promise you, you will live a purposeful, devastatingly effective life, and we will benefit. We need more shit givers like that. Find your whys that let you successfully answer the who who do I want to be? And then work your way down through the house, all the way down to the practicalities of buying that nail. Because it turns out, you might need two nails. And that's just the start. That's it for this week. Hit subscribe 
To get next week's issue straight to your feed, to go deeper, visit importantnotimportant.com slash newsletter. Thanks for being a part of our community, and thanks for giving a shit. Have a great weekend.